Welcome everyone to the Inside Java Newscast, where we cover recent developments on the OpenJDK community. I'm Nikolai Parnock, Java Developer Advocate at I'm Billy Carando, also a Java Developer Advocate. Yeah, Bill, Billy is here as well. Uh, we're both in Barcelona for JVC and Conf. And a couple of days ago, we asked you about your questions on Reddit, on Twitter, and on YouTube about everything Java related. And you have a lot of good ones, and we're here to reply to them. So without further ado, oh, I forgot. There will be tons of links in the description as usual. So you can follow up on the questions and on many of the sources that we mentioned. So do that without further ado. Should we start? We should. OK, go ahead. Nikolai, can I call you Nick? No. All right, so Reddit user Uprise asked, can you talk about a bit more about Layden and its current status? Yeah, OK, so Project Layden is there to address some of the shortcomings of Java when it comes to slow startup time. Uh, slow time to peak performance and like a large footprint. And uh, when you hear these things, of course you think, well, Graal already achieved a lot of that. And it does, but it comes with a very strong constraint, the so-called closed world constraint. Uh, and the issue with that is that it's not feasible for many projects and teams. And so Project Leiden will explore a spectrum of constraints. It will start with weaker ones and try to find performance optimization for those and then slowly increase until it will most likely reach the clo full closed world constraints and we'll try to deliver features in between, but that's not going to happen that soon. So this announcement, what I basically just cited, is from May. Um, there's been some conversations since then. I would not expect anything tangible like next year. And then, like, so this is one of those projects that will take a while. I'm pretty sure about that. Okay. A mean chipmunk uh, on Reddit uh, asked, uh, any update on Lilyput and when it will be available? So Project Lilyput is about reducing the size of object headers. And those are 64, 128 bit, depending on some JVM flag. And what they did is they reliably reduced that to 64 bits. But that comes, came with some performance regressions. And they're currently working on that. And if they can fix those, then there might be a, release, a Java release in 2023 that could contain those fixed 64 bit headers. But the goal is to get eventually get out to 32, ideally. And maybe we can see that in the year after already, so 2024. But you know, like anything that's two years in the future, who knows when that's going to happen, whether that's going to happen at that time. You know, software development timelines are always, you know, yeah. optimistic. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Reddit user Trident.io asks, what's the current status of Project Valhalla slash primitive types? Are we going to get it as a preview feature anytime soon? So there's currently a family of JEPs, uh, four of them that are in either draft or candidate status, and the link for that is in the description. However, the draft and candidate status doesn't really relate to the order that they'll actually be delivered in. Hopefully they'll be delivered sometime soon, and of course when they do, they're gonna be going through the whole preview feature status. Um, don't know exactly when, but hopefully sometime in 2023, we should start to see deliveries for Project Valhalla into the main line of Java. And that's the thing you can promise? Uh, that is a thing that Nikolai said I could promise. Who is me, are you? Edward asks on YouTube, I'm curious if pattern matching will be extended to primitive and or value types. Yes, eventually. So right now the effort around pattern matching is very much being focused on records, which is of course all part of Project Amber. Now a lot of underlying machinery is being developed that could then be applied to other areas like value types, primitive types, and maybe eventually general uh, classes as well, but that's going to be a little bit down the line. Okay, Yoram on Reddit asks, the restrictions for value types seem identical to the restrictions for records. What's the difference between a value record and a record? So with records, you give up encapsulation, but you're getting APIs and well, like deconstruction, like we just recently talked about with pattern matching. With values, you're giving up identity, but you're getting performance in return. And with primitives, you're giving up both identity and reference. And again, you're getting also farther um, performance as well with that. And so there's gonna be many cases where you're gonna want that performance gain while giving up those benefits like encapsulation, identity, reference. And so you're gonna get things like value records and primitive records. Yeah, that actually kind of makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so a bunch of people asked this. I'm just going to pull this one from YouTube, which was Ahan. Uh, 
Uh, well, there's a lot of A's in there. Oh, okay. Will we be able to define operator functions on value types? So, yes, that is something very much on the radar for the uh, architects. And actually, Brian Getz did answer this question sometime before uh, in a link that we will provide in the description. So, it's on the, right, or on the radar for the architects just because, well, obviously, as value types get implemented, that is going to then become more of a pain point, or at least much more of a noticeable pain point that we're not going to allow um, operator overloading for value types. Uh, but it's going to be some amount of time before that's going to be implemented. So just maybe for now, kind of focus on how we can actually use value types, and we rather than worrying about some of these new features that are going to be added way down the line in a future version of Java. Sounds like a, sounds like no, but with more words. Yeah, <laughs> supposedly no, but <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it makes sense though. Yeah. Okay, so um, Bricksomatic asked on YouTube. Can we get with X methods on records to quickly clone an instance? Man, some of these people have horrible handwriting. To clone an instance with just one change. Do you need to write your own answer or question there? No, it's from it's from the internet. Oh, okay, interesting. So <laughs> withers, uh, this has actually been something I've been asked also a lot of time during uh, my presentations. So if you're not familiar with what a wither is, it's where you take a create a copy of a record from another record, but then also update to one or more of the fields from the other record. So it's a much easier way of quickly changing values within it. So this is a good example of Java's last mover advantage, where we take a look at how other languages have implemented withers, which has often been as property assignment, and maybe how we can improve it. So doing that as property assignment can be great, but there can be some pain points like, for example, if you need to have some sort of calculation or some sort of logic done on one of the updated values. Am I losing you on your uh, doing some Duolingo or something on your phone? <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> go uh, <through>. Exactly. <laughs> but with uh, Java, the hope is to actually be able to, uh, the hope in the implementation is to actually be able to apply arbitrary logic um, into the with block so you could have like a loops, exceptions, and so on to allow a more robust behavior to be done when you're actually doing these withers. Um, losing Nikolai here. <laughs> no, it was great. Yeah. So when? Uh, it should be soon. There should hopefully be a draft JEP um, arriving sometime soon, and then hopefully withers will be uh, a preview feature sometime shortly after that. That will be pretty cool. Um, oh, and uh, Brian Getz did also write this all down in a white paper with the link in the description. Good. Yeah, good man. He writes a lot of stuff down. Yeah. Um, YouTuber Yusuf asks, when will you add string interpolation to the platform? And he wasn't the only one. There were a couple of asked yes, questions like yes. uh, YouTube and Twitter and, and Reddit as well. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, again, hopefully very soon. So there's a draft jet for string templates, but that is an area that kind of belies a level of interest in the amount of work that has been done on string templates. Um, so hopefully they'll be coming pretty soon. Um, and I think that may be something that's going to be talked about at Java 1 as well. So a good reason to go. Oh, wow, that would be neat. Uh, Twitterer Boy Yarshinov, I'm sure I not, did not butcher that at all, yeah. asked, uh, why do string templates use reverse slash symbol instead of dollar sign? Mm -hmm. Well, we cost by anti-capitalists, obviously. <laughs> and why do we need str and fumtr policies? Ah, so yes, why do we have the backslash curly brace and policies? So the reason why we did this backslash curly brace, or not we, uh, you know, I'll... I'll, I'll no, I'll sure, that's what I did this. That's what like he Brian did. Brian always asks me, like, how should I do this, Nicole? Yes, I'm yes. Just throwing yeah. a backslash. Yes, yeah, they, they often come to us for, for answers on these things. Is a way to differentiate a string template from a normal string because backslash curly brace is currently illegal within a string. So in fact, if you did try to do a backslash curly brace within a normal string, the Java compiler would throw an accept or throw an error because it would be saying the string doesn't have a policy attached to it. So then the question is, why do we have policies? And that's because, well, when you're going to be doing some of this string interpolation, it's going to be for many different domains, SQL, JSON, HTML. And each of these different domains are going to have different rules around them for formatting them. And um, sometimes this can get very dangerous, like with SQL uh, injection. So 
the reason why we are requiring formatting policies is as this is often done in other languages for string interpolation is that you will do some sort of post processing and sanitation, but that could be somewhat detached from where the string was constructed. By requiring the policy with it, it makes it quite clear that this string is having SQL applied to it or having HTML applied to it, because also sometimes that can be obvious if, for example, you're going to have an SQL screen, SQL query embedded with an HTML page, just so as an example. Okay. Uh, does the JVM employ any kind of instance of acceleration on sealed types? That's a good question. So uh, when you do Thank a... you. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, so when you do a switch, for example, over um, a sealed type, you want to check the, the, which subtype it is. And that's a pretty fast check because it's contained uh, within each instance. But still, there could be optimizations. And uh, they are being discussed. So at the moment, the answer is no. But there are several venues that are being explored. First of all, this could all be done by Invoke Dynamic. Uh, so that uh, is one possible improvement. The other one is to turn this into a decision tree and then do basically transformations on that tree that are guaranteed to be correct that tries to uh, improve its performance. And those two things, as far as I understand, are actively being worked on, particularly the decision tree. And the last thing that could potentially help here is that many other functional programming languages and communities have had this issue in the past and they have found optimizations and Java can, um, again, like make use of its last move advantage and, you know, maybe Take a look at that and figure some things out. So there will probably be improvements in the future. Can you name the other uh, bytecode types? Invoke dynamic, invoke static, invoke virtual. Uh, and the other ones will appear on screen. <laughs> Wait, what is that? I can't, I can't do it. I can't know, and I can name five out of four. Four out of five usually. Static, did I mention static? Special, that, special static, special, special, virtual, dynamic. And the other one. And the other one. Invoke type. Invoke normal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, guys, it's invoke interface. You're welcome. Reddit users five for uh, <laughs> Sai oh my asked: God. Is a Reddit is Java ever going to get union types? Uh, so Java has now union types in the form of seal types that we just discussed. Uh, but I think the question was aimed at. Uh, because the, the interesting thing is the person put in like an example and the question is can I write something like integer or string like you can now write this exception type in a catch clause or that exception type and the interesting thing here is that uh, there's a difference between sealed types which are allowed nominal union types nominal because you give these types names which is what Java does almost everywhere the exception is actually wait for it an exception <laughs> no what? Anyway. Oh. Uh, ah. So the exceptions are an exception because there you can write catch one type of exception or the other type of exception. Uh, that's uncommon. That's just the only place that Java does that. Everywhere else it uses nominal types and will keep doing that. So it already has nominal union types. It will not also get structural union types. That's what these other kind of, you know, creating union types is called. It will not also get those because then you have like two two features for the same, that detect the same target, but are like very similar, but are sufficiently different that there will be incongruencies and will just open up the door to a lot of misunderstandings without giving a lot of benefit. And as an add-on, I think there's also a question being asked actually, um, but that's generally, that's also the same answer where we not get structural function types. We have nominal function types with our, with our um, functional interfaces. We're not also gonna get uh, structural function types because for the same reasons. And now we have entered the lightning round. Only yes or no questions, Nikolai. Okay. Reddit user MK -E MK asks, are there any plans to make the new operator optional? No. Uh, okay. Uh, the the mean chipmunk on Reddit have has asked, any plans to introduce Blazor like web no. framework? In no. Oh, okay. Uh, Twitter Billy Carando asked, uh, do you own any shirts that are not black? No. All right, moving on. All right, that's okay. Uh, YouTube user Adil asked, are reified generics coming to Java? No. Oh, okay. I'm starting to notice a twin trend here. YouTube user DHRU Drew asked, will OpenJDK ever work on a new front end? Please say yes. No. Well, I mean, like ever, yeah. ever is a really long uh, time, but at the moment, I think uh, no buts. Okay, so then, then, then we stick with no, most <laughs> no asterisk. Is that no asterisk? Ast okay. No asterisk. Okay, you read it, user Tay 
Brian asks, are there any plans for immutability by default for fields and variables? No. The, can, I, can I do? Yes. Okay. So, um, no, there's no plan to just, like, I understand, right? So if you write final everywhere in front of any local variable, in front of any parameter, which is, like, technically the good thing to do because, like, you don't want to reassign those usually. Like, that's a lot of noise, like visual noise. So you want to avoid this. So it would be nice to have, like, a flag to, you know, write before the class, like, public final by default class where then everything is flipped around and everything is fine but that's 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 not, such things are not something that that language these kind of flags and like little tweaks that's not something that java gets and the reason for that is because everybody wants some and then we have like a hundred of those so um but there are a bunch of uh, types that will be final by default and the fields will be final by default there will be records and that will be value classes that will be primitive classes so um, it's easier to have types that have this property, but there will be no like switch that you can. Um, you you have broke the lightning round rules with that answer. That, that Reddit sense, user, yes. moving on. Reddit user Tay Bryan also again asks: Are there any plans for compile time null safety? No, but uh, okay. So no, check out JSpecify, and primitive types will not be nullable. All right, Twitter. Probably no, but probably no, probably no. <laughs> we heard it here first, folks. Twitter Kamala can't. Hi, want to be your colleague? Yeah, actually. Yeah, actually. It's so go to inside Java jobs. Inside Java slash jobs slash jobs, <laughs> and you can become not just our colleague, but you can also alternatively work with Kotlin people. So we're looking for people working on, on the Java platform group on coding and Java FX even. So are you saying I'm not competent? Yes, I think this has been meant sufficiently clear throughout this video. Remove that from the edit. <laughs> I'm editing. <laughs> anyway, that was it for today. Uh, we're gonna see you. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna <laughs> see you again in two weeks. Yes. Yeah, so, so long. long. <laughs> That was good. That was I good. I loved it. So we cover recent developments in the OpenJDK community. I'm Nikolai Parlov, Java developer advocate at Oracle. Oh, my foot was in here at the right. It's going to be a lot of outtakes. Invoke interface. Invoke interface.